Hi, um, bring this up. Okay, I am Eliana Ramage, fiction writer in residence at my residence. I'm a white Cherokee woman with brown hair, glasses, and a white shirt. Um, what I'm going to read is from my novel about a Cherokee girl who wants to be an astronaut. And all you need to know is that she was just cast as Meredith's husband in a play written by the youth um, about the Trail of Tears. At our first rehearsal, Meredith improvised a gesture during the scene where classmates in soldier outfits pulled us from the house I had built for her. Just for a moment, Meredith pressed her forehead to mine and cried out, catching a fistful of my hair at the back of my neck. It hurt. My soul, metaphorically, fell out my private parts and slammed onto the stage. When we were on the trail together, I took care of Meredith. Her chest was in constant movement, her breaths deep and labored. She acted her heart out. The bundled up red haired American girl doll that was our baby pressed against the shining buttons of her shirt. In the second act, I broke the neck of a mockingbird with my bare hands, which was a metaphor, and gave the whole thing to Meredith to eat. Our two older children died in the stockades in Georgia. Our third child died of scarlet fever in Alabama when a soldier in Tennessee threatened to shoot a crying baby, Meredith accidentally smothered it. After we buried our baby, just after intermission, Meredith staged the whole third act to hold her head against my chest as we walked. She had chosen that, not the drama teacher. I bought a chicken sandwich and zipped it into the outside pocket of her backpack after our dress rehearsal. No note, it wasn't a mockingbird, but it was something. At the end of the trail, when our once rowdy family had been reduced to, reduced to the two of us, I took my first steps into Indian territory with an inconsolable Meredith in my arms. She sobbed real tears all three nights in our school auditorium and grasped at my chest and my tattered collar as I held her like the baby she had accidentally smothered. After each performance, she would kiss me, the first kisses of my whole life. The two of us were wrapped in the heavy black cloth of a backstage curtain like a burrito while the audience waited for us outside. On the last night of the play, she took my hand in hers and pulled it under her mud-crusted trade shirt, under her bra even, and made the softest sound in the back of her throat. And I thought I'd die to hear it again. I thought this is the meaning of life, making someone make a sound like that. Everything I've done before this has been a waste. And then she left to collect her grocery store flowers from fucking Daniel. I felt downtrodden. Like I just had all my children die one by one and watched my wife run off with someone else. Hadn't we been a team? Meredith and I were like the only survivors in a world of regular people. Who could understand the horrors we had seen? After the play, when we were back in school and barely spoke to each other, except for the times when I, for example, dropped my most sophisticated choice of book in front of her so she'd have to stop walking and get down on her knees to hand it back to me. It was like the anguish of our shared past had ruined us, and now we were divorced. <laughs>